I like the Beatles song well enough, but unlike that classic hit, this Give Peace a Chance uplift is not an anti-war message. Well, maybe an anti-conflict one. The following is the charge that we say at the end of service each Sunday to remind us how to live in the coming week. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all beings. Live love in word and deed. The last time I gave a sermon at church, I shared how the charge is a wonderful summation of how Jesus wants us to live. I focused on how the command to return no one evil for evil restrained my natural impulse to strike back when harmed many times in my 20 years in business. This uplift, I'd like to touch on the command to go out into the world in peace. First, there is the kind of peace that Paul talks about in Philippians 4. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. This is an inner calm, a blessed assurance that God is with us with grace and forgiveness. This kind of peace is steadfast through the ups and downs of life. Another aspect of peace that is also grounded in grace and forgiveness is between humans. It involves seeking harmony with our brothers and sisters. One of Jesus' most significant teachings is the Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5. Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. So what is a peacemaker? I think it involves seeking harmony and understanding as a priority. For me, when possible, it's taking a step back, drawing a breath or two, counting to ten. It's not taking immediate offense, striking back, or being fixated on getting even. It's building bridges, not walls. It's giving others the benefit of the doubt and apologizing when appropriate. It is not doubling down, as is currently the rage in politics, and that pun is intended. I'm no expert, but any relationship coach will agree on the key elements, asking questions, listening to the answers, making a conscious effort to resolve the conflict rather than putting up our dukes. It is avoiding the impulse to return evil for evil. It's being slow to take offense. If you can ask about the intention of a perceived insult before getting angry, you may be surprised at how often the other person meant something else entirely. Years ago, I was a volunteer mediator for RJUMP, the Restorative Justice Mediation Program. At its core, its concept is peacemaking. The program seeks to restore justice between the victims and offenders of juvenile crime through a guided mediation process. Its goals are interpersonal, healing and restoration, as opposed to punishment and deterrence, which are the hallmarks of criminal justice. The key elements in the mediation process are familiar. Active listening, no crosstalk or interrupting, etc. Both the victims and offenders are juveniles, so the offenses are not serious. Vandalism, property damage, bullying, a physical altercation where no one is seriously injured. They may seem trivial, but they seldom are. One mediation in particular involved a group of teens throwing water balloons out of a moving car on a hot summer night. One balloon harmlessly struck a man in the chest who was walking with his son. Crazy, right? I mean, there was no physical injury. Why did the court get involved in a prank? The offender, and most definitely his father, entered the mediation hostile at how a seemingly insignificant offense escalated to this level. Also, if the mediation was not completed successfully, there was a chance the teen offender could get a record. I recall sensing that even the victim was a little embarrassed that the issue had caused this much concern. But when the victim's father spoke, the issues were clarified. Initially, 
the father pointed out that it's dangerous because if a pr projectile strikes a person in the chest with force, it can stop their heart. We all witnessed this last football season when Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin's heart was stopped in just this way. Eventually, what was really bothering the victim's father surfaced. It was his own behavior. He had lost control and verbally lashed out at the kids in the car, cursing and ranting at the teens in front of his son. He let his son down, he figured, by not setting a better example under pressure. The offender's father, also a Navy dad, understood this immediately, and I watched as the hostility between the men melted away, replaced by understanding, compassion, remorse, and forgiveness. Peace was restored. As the fathers connected, and just for a moment, it felt like we had been tuned in to another frequency. Some energy passed through the room that was powerful, but at the same time felt safe and protective. Just like Paul describes, a peace that surpasses all understanding. I think it's what heaven must feel like. It was worlds away, no kingdoms away, from the anger and retribution that are associated with strength and power in our world. But the choice is ours. So give peace a chance. The song pairing is Fountain of Love. Till next time, stay safe, be brave, and keep walking in the light.